I'm going to share with you some really helpful tips to hopefully help you gain more confidence in watercolour painting. Let's get started. My first tip is to draw with a twig. I've actually dipped the twig, which is a twig from the garden, sharpened with a pencil sharpener into some watered down watercolour paint. And I'm just sketching something from my imagination. So there's no pressure of either painting a scene that's in front of me or from a photograph. It's just from my imagination. And I'd also suggest using the back of an old painting. Another thing I would suggest as well is use large brushes and really load the brush and just experiment. Don't have any sort of outcome in your head. Try to just explore and practice before you start painting. Keeping a sketchbook is another really good way of gaining confidence in watercolour. So as you can see here, I've not even taped my painting down. I'm just sort of tilting here and sort of applying that cobalt blue mixed with the burnt sienna, wet on wet onto the sky there and just tilting, adding a touch more burnt sienna there. And I just love how watercolour flows and I just want to experiment and just enjoy just painting without any expectations and just see what happens. So I'm using a size 14 brush here, really loading that brush, tilting that paint and bringing it down to the horizon. I love painting landscapes because you can be quite abstract as well or impressionistic. Um, you know, you can just try out different things. So I've mixed up a little bit of green here. I'm using some quinacridone gold now. You can use raw sienna. And it's actually quite nice um, painting either a landscape or a seascape from your imagination because you can try out different colours as well. And what I'm using here is again my size 14 brush and tilting and dropping in colours, just seeing what happens, lots of water, flick it, don't worry. We're the worst judges of our work. We are our worst critics. So try not to be too hard on yourself. Just enjoy the process. See what happens. Sort of understand the medium. I wish 30 years ago plus that someone had told this to me and even demonstrated what I'm doing now. It would really give me an insight into watercolour. I used it. I didn't load my brushes. I used smaller brushes. I didn't do any tilting or anything like that. And it was such a difficult medium and you've got all those back runs and tidal marks. But actually getting to know watercolour, the rules, you can throw them out of the window when you're doing one of these sort of practice um, paintings. Just experiment, add loads of water into a drying wash, see what happens. Tilt, scrub that paint on you know, just kind of getting a feel for the medium. I always feel like it's like an almost instinct for it. And the only way we can get that is by practicing. It's like anything else. So uh, what I would say is yes, practice, but enjoy practicing. Try out different techniques. So I'm just using a little bit of Prussian blue here, a touch of yellow, a little bit of cobalt blue. Use your favorite colors or just one color. You could use, use a sepia or a Payne's grey or a black or something like that where you can just get a feel for the medium. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. And some areas of your painting work and others don't. And that's all about the learning. And there's only one way we can do that is by practicing. So as you can see here, I'm kind of just mixing up different greens, yellow greens, and getting a lighter wash by adding more water. And I'm actually drizzling in now water straight sort of off my brush there onto the damp surface to see what happens. And I might get some yummy back runs and cauliflowers as well. And if you don't want back runs and cauliflowers, you can sort of start understanding how you get them. And I'm just sort of experimenting here, making marks. This is kind of like sort of distant hills, maybe a field, a very messy field, and they're kind of a bit of water coming through in the middle there. That's where I've left the white of the paper. Now I've swapped to a sort of, it's like a reservoir brush. I'll put a link for this brush in the description below. But um, it's actually Alvaro Castanet's Neef brushes. 
so it holds a lot of paint but you can also use the brush almost like a you're drawing with the paint i really like it i mean he uses it to create long thin lines it, you could use your continue using your twig if you wanted to or a rigger or a liner brush my tip for this is just it's quite a flicky brush and difficult to control and you get lots of different sort of marks with it and what i like about this brush is i can sort of just experiment and try different things with it and it i'm not even though it's a smallish brush the tip of it's small i'm sort of very loose with it drawing with it scrubbing with it as you can see here I'm not worried about the outcome of this painting. Well, only a little bit because obviously I'm doing a video for YouTube and my Patreon. But um, I just want to sort of share with you the kind of things I do to loosen up. And a, a really fabulous uh, watercolour artist, Anne Blockley, um, actually says um, that she starts off her paintings this way to get sort of get rid of those nerves sometimes that we get when we're before we start a painting because we've got that blank white sheet of paper she kind of says to herself that she's just having a practice it's a warm-up and before you know it she says that it's turned into a, a quite a decent painting and she's got herself involved so that's a really good tip to take that pressure off and yes use the back of an old painting so I'm just drizzling some warm water in here hopefully to create some texture and back runs and again, sort of breaking all the rules. I've got some brush -o here. Don't worry if you don't have any brush -o. Um, You could just spatter if you wanted to, but it's moss green brush -o. And to kind of wake it up a little bit, I'll spritz it with some water. If you want to learn a little bit more about brush -o, I'll put a link for a tutorial I made all about brush -o in the description below. So I'm using salt here. I'm gonna sprinkle it onto the damp surface and it'll absorb the paint to create light textures once it's dry. So I'm using a large brush here as well just to pull the paint down just to see what happens and I'm actually starting to get into this painting now which is quite nice. So I'm using my plastic card as well to lift off or to scratch into the surface to create sort of dark trees, trunks and branches. So I quite like using these sort of different media really, the plastic card and the salt and the brush -over because it loosens me up and it's really kind of fun as well because you're not quite sure what's going to happen. So I'm using the spritzer bottle here and I'm just using it to sort of dilute the surface to re-wet it and I'm letting all that paint drizzle down just to see what happens and believe it or not I'm just using my twig here to kind of scratch into the surface I'm literally just scribbling and it's another way of kind of warming up sort of letting go you don't feel as fearful and you're willing to take a few more chances as well and remember it is just a piece of paper and I'm just now mixing up some yellow here just to paint along the horizon area. Look like a distant field, adding a little bit of phthalo blue. With a pinch of the quinacridone gold, you can use raw sienna or yellow ochre. There's always lots of alternatives. I'm just making this a little bit darker with some Payne's Grey. And the painting is still damp, so I'm actually breaking all my rules by sort of using a big brush and just sort of painting large areas here. I'm just outlining the sort of stream that's coming down here, pretty much working sort of damp into damp, so the paint isn't as wet. That won't stop me from maybe sort of dropping in some wet paint again sometimes by breaking the rules it kind of relaxes me a little bit more especially sort of scratching and scribbling and you know just trying out lots of different things it really can be fun and I find sometimes with these practice paintings you'll end up with quite a nice little section that's you know sort of a little happy accident and you can actually sort of crop it and make it into a little card or a, a smaller painting even so there's always ways round things. I'm tilting here. I love to tilt and to drizzle water in there or even spritz with my spritzer bottle just to get things moving. Watercolour is such a mobile medium. You can really have some fun with it. As you can see there, it's really sort of drizzled and ran to create some effects. What I quite like as well is using a paper towel to lift off if things sort of run into a place they shouldn't. 
and that's it's quite effective here i'm using rough arches watercolor paper as i say it's the back of an old painting so um, it's quite nice and sometimes a painting doesn't go so well if i'm using good paper i get a little bit fearful because you may have paid a little bit more for the paper so i always think there's two sides of the paper so you can use both sides and just have fun with it and see what happens and you can also get practice paper as well um, to work on so lots of art shops sell practice paper a little bit cheaper it won't be as obviously as good as the watercolor paper but you're at least get a little bit of practice building up that confidence and again I'm going back to this Neef brush here and I've mixed up some really dark blues just outlining the edge of the water using some Payne's grey with a touch of the phthalo blue and burnt sienna and again sort of still painting on this damp paper I haven't dried it yet because I want the salt to work and if you look to the right hand sort of side in the middle ground there you can see the salt is starting to work. Mind you, I might end up painting over all of that and it doesn't matter because this is all about experimenting, having fun, practicing just to build up that confidence. So I'm just mixed up some really yummy darks here, a little bit of ultramarine. The paint is very creamy and I'm just painting damp into damp, just here and there, just making marks. And I think you just, and, and scribbles as you can see there, I just love it. I just think you can just really let yourself go. As I say, you're the only, you're the harshest judge. So just try not to be hard on yourself and just experiment. I just love to spatter it really does loosen me up as well 
and helps me kind of not get too careful about my painting and also stops me from overworking. Um, I'm just painting in some thin grasses here with this lovely brush. As I say, you could use your twig for this or a rigger or a liner brush. And if you don't have any of those, you could just use a small brush um, or a large brush and just use the tip of it you know experiment and see what happens so a little bit of Payne's grey with quinacridone gold here for this lovely dark colour and I'm just sort of painting all these sort of thin sort of twiggy details in the foreground there so my picture's kind of developed um, from my imagination and I've got that lovely sort of stream leading the eye through but a spattering here on the horizon but it's a good idea now to allow the painting to dry naturally to allow the salt to work and it has worked here and there especially in the foreground for textures so I'm using some white gouache or you can use white watercolor paint and I've added a little bit of water to it and I'm spattering and I'm just wetting this stream here and I'm going to spatter that as well to create some more light reflecting on the stream there and just painting a little bit of white at the top as the stream disappears. I've mixed in some yellow with the white and white's quite useful at the end of a watercolour painting, especially if you've lost your light and you want to create a little bit of sparkle. So I'm mixing up some Payne's Grey here and Ultramarine. I'm just sort of outlining the stream to lead the eye into the painting. So I'm getting a little bit more into composition because once you have these sort of practice paintings and you're warming up, you will start to kind of compose it and, you know, try to find the good in it and, and try and make it work and enjoy it. So um, I'm mixing up some white, yellow and blue here to make a green. And I'm just painting some lighter green grasses in the foreground, wet on dry, um, just to create a little bit more detail there. A touch more spattering around the horizon area with some of the yellow green there just to create some more textures and you know landscapes full of textures in it all the bushes and sort of little wild flowers and weeds and everything so just a little bit of blue here spattered in the water with some cobalt blue and I thought it'd be quite nice to kind of add a little bit of that cobalt blue to the water's edge there using my size eight round brush and then sort of pull up the grasses with the end of my paintbrush just pulling them up with the plastic card as well to create some detail in the form foreground there and I'm going to look at the painting through two L-shaped mounts just to see if I've got a painting here that works and I felt that the right hand side of the painting didn't have enough paint on it but it had some lovely trees in the sort of on the horizon there on the right hand side so I'm just softening with my brush here just to blend that green that has dried on the painting and just blend it and soften it so there's not that sort of cut off there and it looks softer and more natural doing a little bit in the foreground as well just to soften so your eye goes to sort of that stream up to the middle ground and then off into the distant trees there. So here is my finished practice painting and I'm quite pleased with it just so it got me warmed up and gave me a little bit of confidence before I actually maybe start my actual painting you know you get you kind of get rid of that fear especially when you're painting on the back of an old painting so I hope you found this tutorial helpful and that um, by practicing um, encouraging I encourage you to practice so you build confidence and knowledge and know-how of watercolor so if you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you'll get updates of my latest tutorials. And if you want to get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy practice painting. Bye for now.